at the beginning, the embryo looks something like this. You have the amnion over here, and then you have the ectoderm. This is the ectoderm. Okay. Then right beneath it, there is an autoport. Okay. So we had the amnion over here, we had the ectoderm, the notochord, and this over here is the amniotic cavity. Then we had the mesoderm over here, it goes something like this. Okay, that's the mesoderm. And then comes the endoderm over here. Okay, so we had the amnion, the amnion cavity, the ectoderm, the nodal cord, the mesoderm, and the endoderm. So let me just write this all down. This was the amnion. This was the amniotic cavity. This over here, this blue thing was ectoderm. This dark thing in the center was the notochord. This was the mesoderm. And this over here inside was the endoderm. Now you're probably wondering what is all this? Well, it's the cross section of the embryo. If we look at it from the side, it will look something like this. Most probably, yep. Let's say this side over here would be the cranial side. Another side that we cut off would be the caudal side. Now let's get back to the ectoderm, mesoderm, and the endoderm. The ectoderm is very important for skin development, brain development, which we are we interested in, and it is also important for tooth animal development. It also forms lining of mouth, anus, sweat glands, hair, nails. Now the mesoderm layer is the middle layer between the ectoderm and endoderm. It is important for connective tissue development. Endoderm is the innermost layer. It forms the epithelial lining of multiple systems. But we are not actually interested in endoderm and mesoderm that much. We are interested in the ectoderm and notochord. I will draw this part over here from a close-up perspective just to show you how brain is being developed, how it all starts. At the beginning of the third week of pregnancy it is possible to notice that the ectoderm gets thicker. So we have the ectoderm here and then it gets thicker and then it's normal ectoderm here all again. It is a sign of the creation of the most complicated system in our body, the nervous system. The notochord is what induces this process. It is over here, colored in blue. And this thick ectoderm over here is called the neural plate. The notochord induces this flat neural plate to fold into cylindrical neural tube. But at this point over here, this part is called the neural fold. And when the neural tube is created, out of the neural fold, we have the neural crase developed over here. So first it was part of the ectoderm, and then it developed a neural crase. The complete nervous system develops out of ectoderm. These cells over here are called the neuroepithel cells. Those are the cells on the inside of the neural tube. Now let's look at the inner of the neural tube and how it's divided. This is how it looks like when we draw it in more details. Now remember I told you this is the cross section of the embryo. We cannot see the cranial or caudal part. But we can distinguish the ventral part and the dorsal part. So this is dorsal and this is ventral. Okay. The dorsal part contains the alar plate. That's over here.
while the ventral part contains the basal plate. And that's over here. The basal plate is important for motor functions of the brain. Now, if we look at the neural tube from this direction, and the neural tube continues on to go like this, let's say this is the cranial direction, and this over here was the caudal direction, so this is the cranial. And this over here was caudal. Now the neural tube continues on to go like that, and at the end, it remains open. It's not closed. The neural's fold did not fold completely at the end, at the cranial end and the caudal end. So over here, it's opened. Because, because try to remember, we had the ectoderm like this, and then we had the thickened neural plate, and then we had the ectoderm again. And then the neural plate got deeper and the neural tube is created. Now this does not happen at the caudal and cranial end of the embryo. So the neural tube remains open but not forever. It closes but it closes a bit later than the rest of the neural tube. Yet if they do not close it results in neural tube defects and anencephaly which means the baby can be born without the brain, without cerebellum, and those babies usually die. I mean, I saw on TV uh, recently one baby lived to its second year of life, but those cases are really, really rare. Those babies usually die very fast. Now let's get back to the neural tube. Let me write this. This was the basal plate. on the ventral side and this was the alar plate on the dorsal side. The dorsal part of the alar plate is important for environmental perception or somatic sense. The more ventral part is important for the introspective perception. The dorsal part of the basal plate is important for the inner muscles, for example muscles as sphincters and muscles in digestive tract. An eventual part of the basal plate is important for the environmental functions of the brain. It is important for movement of the skeleton with muscles and so on. So, we had this part over here called the basal plate, which is important for the motor functions, and we had this part over here, the alar plate which is important for the sensory functions. The alar plate is on the dorsal side and the basal plate is on the ventral side. And I will just say that this part, this zone, that borders the central channel, is called the ventricular zone. And this sulcus over here is the sulcus limitans. It separates the alar plate from the basal plate. This part over here, on the ventral side of the neural tube, is floor plate. It serves as a guide for positioning of the neural tube. So this is the floor plate. And this part over here, the dorsal part of the neural tube is called the roof plate.
This was a lesson about neural tube and early stages of the brain development. To learn what happens further and how his brain developed, please check out the next video. To find out more about my software and about my lessons, please check out my website, flashbrainanatomy.com.